Hey everybody, it's George the Tech. This is a long awaited review for some of you who know that I have this thing, especially for me though, because I saw this two years ago at NAM show. I've seen it the last couple of years. I got one in my hands and I'm finally carving out the time to review this product. And that is, I am checking out tonight the Townsend Labs Sphere L22 microphone. And this is a, a really special, kind of interesting microphone. It, the microphone itself maybe isn't what's so spectacular about it, although it's a really high quality mic. I mean, let's take a look at it, right? Um, very substantial build quality. I mean, the thing is rather large. So if you have a mic arm you're going to put on, make sure it's a strong one. I mean, this arm here, this is a tough mic arm, so it can handle the weight. It's mic. Doesn't not gonna work on a wobbly twenty dollar cheap mic stand. You want a good one. Um, it's substantial. Um, it it's a double capsule microphone. So if you know dual capsule mics, you're probably thinking of mics that have a switch on them to switch from Omni to cardioid, super cardioid, whatever, multiple patterns, figure eight, that kind of thing. Well, this thing is not limited by any particular setting or any particular pattern because all of those things are chosen either while you're recording into your DAW or in post after you're finished recording. You can control every aspect of how the microphone picks up your voice, its pattern, its proximity effect, its phase, all sorts of parameters. And not only that, it models, the software does anyway, the plugin models many different kinds of microphones. So when you get this microphone, it's like having a lot of different microphones in one in one kit. So first thing you do is when you get the microphone, get it out of the box. It's got a nice box. Here's the box. Comes in a, a quality road case. Not every mic comes in a quality road case. This one is actually this one's actually pretty nice. It's well made. When you open it, the hinge actually stays where you put it. How about that? So that's pretty cool. I like that. Um, inside it, you're going to have the shock mount. You're going to have the microphone itself. Of course, it has a non shock mount mount as well. A rigid mount, I guess, in case you need to save space. Um, it's got extra elastics for the shock mount, but the thing that makes this mic totally different from probably what most of you are accustomed to, especially in voiceover is the mic cable. Here is the mic cable. Looks kind of like a normal mic cable, except for the fact that it's got well, it's got two outputs, so it's a stereo mic cable. The one end that goes into the microphone is a five pin XLR. And then it has two outputs, a left and a right, or a channel one and channel two. They're actually labeled front and rear. Okay, that's weird, right? Yeah, these are front and rear. One cable is the front capsule. The other cable is the rear capsule. And the software figures out by how you set it up, by how you control it, what sound or combination of sound comes out of those two capsules. So this is a really interesting product. So let me go ahead and plug this in. So you're, if, you're, if you're paying attention and thinking, you're probably going, oh, wait a minute, this needs a stereo audio interface? It does. So whatever system you're gonna record with, make sure, <laughs> like I said, heavy mic, make sure everything's tight. Make sure that you're using an audio interface that has a capability of recording two channels of separate audio. So if you do have something like a Scarlett 2i2, you're good. You've got two mic preamp channels that you can use. Um, I'm gonna go through my mixing console, which has multiple channels, and I'm gonna record it that way. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna turn off all the processing on my preamp. I'm gonna bypass everything. I'm gonna patch this mic in to both channels of my preamp. So here we go. All right. I am on the Sphere now. Yes, I am. So what you're hearing right now is the Sphere microphone, in essence, in essence, basically in omnidirectional mode, meaning that it's feeding both the front capsule facing this way and the rear capsule facing that way at about the same level into my mixer. So in channel one, it's all front capsule. On channel two, it's all back capsule. So <laughs> this is what it sounds like if you talk into the wrong side. 
of your microphone. It sounds something like this. But if I turn it around, speak into the back, boom. That's now the front. <laughs> you're lost yet. No, you're not lost yet? Okay, good. Um, let's go ahead and make sure we have the, the software. So to get the software, we do have to, we got to, you know, have an account. Everything these days seems to require accounts, don't, don't they? So I'm going to make my account. I have read the policy. <laughs> of course, I've read the policy. Of course, I'm going to sign up for the newsletter. Always sign up for the newsletter for products you're demoing and testing and owning. Um, I'm not going to register it because, well, this is a demo. I don't own the mic. So I'll go ahead and do that. Once you're finished registering and you're logged in, then you can get, go to the downloads page and download your software. I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to download Sphere for Mac and run the install package. And I do have Pro Tools on here. I've got stuff that run. I'm going to run. I'm going to install all of the plugins because I have all of these DAWs on this system. While that's installing, you'll notice the microphone is now upside down. While I had a chance to, uh, while waiting for the software to send me registration, I flipped the microphone upside down because I really prefer the mic to be hanging under, hanging above so I can speak more under the microphone, avoiding plosives. I, I'm still catching a little bit of plosive, but nowhere near as much as if I was popping right into the mic, which it basically makes it detonate. Um, so this is a great placement for avoiding plosives a lot better. Um, this is a very open mic and I'm not using it with a pop screen. So I see the capsules very clearly inside, which means they're going to be very easy to pop. So if you don't have a good mic technique, which I'm trying to practice right now, you're going to need at least one or two pop screens, uh, to try to coax your, the pops away from the microphone. And we're going to do one, we're going to make that a single stereo track because this software wants to take a stereo source and then out of that stereo source create the new microphone image so that actually needs to be stereo so we're going to go to input and make it stereo input one and input two one two yes there we go let's make it bigger boom okay here's the thing if you've got a very low latency system where you get extremely low latency monitoring you could actually have the plugin installed and monitor your voice going through the plugin real time, record through the plugin and dial it in so that when you're hearing yourself, you're hearing yourself through the plugin. Most of us don't have systems that are that low latency unless we're musicians doing a lot of multi track recording. So, for the purposes of this example, we're going to record it and we're going to play with all the settings in post. Just going to work a lot, work out a lot better for us here. So let's go ahead and roll and get some audio. Uh, this is George the Tech, and I'm giving a demo here of the Townsend Labs Sphere L22 emulating microphone. This is a dual capsule microphone that captures audio in two channels, the front and the rear, and then takes that information, combines it using their proprietary plugin to create many different microphone models and the ability in post to modify the sound of the microphone's pickup pattern, proximity effect, and polar pattern. So let's give it a demo. All right. So now we have that audio and see if we can get these plugins to show up in Reaper. So I'm going to click effects, pop open the effects window, and I'm going to look under my AU plugins and see if there is a Townsend Labs plugin now. And sure enough, there it is. So we'll load Sphere, not 180, because 180 is for stereo. Click OK. Now we've got that plugin loaded. So what I'm going to try to do now is just play this back on a loop. And that way, while it's playing back the audio I just recorded, we can start having fun and playing around with the settings in this plugin. So you can hear how these uh, different controls have effect on the audio. This is also really cool from an educational standpoint because you can do things with this mic you can't do with almost any other mic, and that is pretend you have a whole lot of different mics and then see how different mics sound. How do they react to your voice? How does changing the proximity effect change the sound? How does changing the pattern change the sound? So it's, it's a cool thing to experiment. So let's go ahead and hit play. 
This is George the Tech, and I'm giving a demo here of the Townsend Labs. And I'll just pattern. L22 emulating microphone. This is a dual capsule microphone that captures audio in two channels, the that's, front and the rear. That's, and then that's figure eight, so now it's picking up the back as well as the front. Combined proprietary plugin to create many different microphones. This is Omni. And the ability in post to modify the sound of the microphone. Which is the most lively sound because it picks up everywhere. So Sorry about the pop. Give it a demo. Uh, this is George the Tech, and I'm giving a demo here of the Townsend Labs Sphere L22 emulating microphone. This is a dual capsule microphone that captures audio in two. I think that pattern sounds good. It's not quite cardioid. It's not super cardioid. They call it, well, they call it super cardioid. <laughs> it's not hyper, super. Hyper is even more cardioid. Um, so I think the super cardioid pattern, again, this is completely subjective. You have to use your ears here, but I, I think it sounds good. So let's see if we need to adjust the high pass filter. I, I don't think so, but I'll take a listen. Two channels, the front and the rear, and then takes that information, mm, it's combines thin it sounding. using their proprietary plugin to create Many different microphone models. And I'm going to stick with the filter at 100. Uh, is that what it was? 100? Yeah, 100 hertz. So that's going to make, when I do pop the mic, a little less harsh sounding. Next thing we'll do is play with the axis. That's the direction the microphone's picking up. And since my mic placement, I think, is already good, again, I got the mic in the right place. I don't want to change this. I'm going to leave it on zero. Um, but, you know, another way to change the sound of the mic. You could get creative with the sound here. Um, let's say it's a little bit sibilant sounding on your voice. If you steer the axis away, it's going to be less sibilant. Lastly, there's proximity effect. Let's see how that sounds when we play with that. Capsule microphone that captures audio in two channels, the front and the rear, and then takes that information. That's the most. Combines it using their proprietary plugin to create many different microphone models and the ability in post to modify the sound of the microphone. And that's the least. Pick up pattern proximity. So as I turn proximity effect away, it sounds thinner as though I've literally stepped away from the microphone, sounding like I'm further away. As I turn proximity effect to the right, I'm getting virtually closer to the microphone and building up more low end. And this is a cool way to deal with being further away from the mic than is ideal, but still getting back some of that richness that maybe you're wanting to get. Um, by turning that proximity effect to the right, you'll get more. Now, I'm in a pretty big room, but if you're in a small booth, you may want to do the opposite. You may want to back off on the proximity effect because in small booths, you got to be up close to the mic. So backing away on the proximity effect will hopefully counteract that nicely. And so we've been listening to the way I sound as though I was on a U47. Let's see what it sounds like on other microphones. So let's go ahead and play back. And let's find out. Let's let's flip through the mic models and see how those different mics sound. This is George the Tech, and I'm giving a demo here of the Townsend Labs Sphere L22 emulating microphone. This is a dual capsule microphone that captures audio in two channels, the front and the rear, and then takes that information, combines it using their proprietary plugin to create many different microphone models and the ability in post to modify the sound of the microphone's pickup pattern, proximity effect, and polar pattern. So let's give it a demo. Cool, huh? I mean, I just went through four or five different models just now. Yeah, I know. It's not like a night and day difference. It's not like, whoa, it's not dramatic as you go from one Neumann type model to the next because their microphones, such tones are all subtly different, not dramatically different. But let's try a few more. This is George the Tech, and I'm giving a demo here of the Townsend Labs. And this is more of an AKG mic. L22 emulating microphone. This is a dual capsule microphone that captures audio in two channels, the front and the I rear. Like, and I like this one. And takes that information, combines it using their proprietary plugin to create many different microphone models and the ability in post to modify the sound of the microphone's pickup pattern, proximity effect, and polar pattern. So let's give it a demo. So this microphone is modeled after an AKG C414. And that mic had a lot of versions over the years. So what they're saying is that this is the model that has a brass capsule. And there's also one that's nylon. Let's hear the difference. This is George the Tech, and I'm giving a demo here of the Townsend Labs 
Sphere L22 emulating microphone. This is a dual capsule microphone Press. that captures audio in two channels, the front and the rear, and Nylon. then takes that information, combines it using their proprietary plugin to create a more modern many version. different microphone models and the ability in post to modify the sound of the microphone's and pickup pattern, this proximity one's, This one's a bit more bright. Polar pattern. So let's give it a demo. This is George the Tech, and I'm giving a demo here of the Townsend Pencil Labs mic. Sphere L22 emulating microphone. This is a ribbon mic. capsule microphone Very different. that captures audio in two channels, the front and the rear, and then takes that... Now, if anybody knows ribbon mics, and this is no exception, ribbon mics are usually uh, basically bi-directional or super, or super figure eight. That's not even a thing. Figure eight. So they usually pick up on both sides. With this thing, we can get the sound of the ribbon mic, but the pickup pattern of a cardioid mic or super cardioid. So you can have a ribbon mic with changeable pickup patterns, which pretty much doesn't exist. So that's, that's pretty slick. This information combines it using their proprietary plugin to create Another ribbon. many different microphone models and the ability in post to modify the sound of the microphone's pickup pattern, proximity effect, and polar pattern. So let's give it a demo. Sure, so SM57. And I'm giving a demo here of the Townsend Labs Sphere L22 emulating microphone. SM7B. A dual capsule microphone that captures audio in two channels. And this is the front and the rear. The native and sound of the mic. It takes that information, combines it using their proprietary. So that's pretty, that's pretty slick. Pretty amazing. I mean, these settings are, you know, subtle. These are differences. All these set differences are subtle to an untrained ear. Someone that's not, you know, been spending years as an audio engineer being picky about the differences from one thing to the next. But if you're a recording engineer, these differences are dramatic. I, I tend to call them shades of mauve. <laughs> shades of mauve, you know? There's all these different shades of the same color family that to the untrained eye just look like a bunch of the same colors. But if you ever try to match two pieces of clothing that are same, they seem to be the same color, but until you put them next to each other, you don't realize they don't match at all. That's kind of how it is with these things. When you start comparing them a lot, you start hearing the subtle differences from one mic to the next to the next, and the differences start to make more and more of a difference um, and matter more. So anyway, what's my takeaway from this mic? Um, if you've had, you know, a lot of the usual sus suspects in your studio and you're, you know, you've got the, the shotgun mic for recording your voiceovers and you, you've tried some of the Neumanns that, you know, they sound familiar, you know their sound, but you've always wanted to try something maybe a little out of reach, maybe a little unusual, something really, really expensive like the 251. Um, this is a fun way to get to access and experiment with those different microphones. The sound of the mic on its own, as you're hearing right now, this is really totally direct, direct, raw, and just the front capsule. It sounds fantastic. I mean, it's a good sounding mic as it is, clearly. So anything we do to spice up the sound is just going to make it in some ways better. Maybe not always, but in some ways better and maybe fit and work better with your voice. So anyway, this has been the Townsend Labs Sphere L22. Thanks for going on this journey with me as I get to go through the learning process of installing it and making it work. Maybe you've got a new opinion about modeling microphones. I don't know. But anyway, this has been George the Tech. And uh, if you want to know more about what I'm doing, follow me on all my social channels, George the Tech on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I have a Facebook page and I have a Facebook account as well. You're pretty much going to find me all over, but the Facebook account is probably my most active place in the social spheres. Uh, and I'll be covering all sorts of stuff like this as the year goes on. And uh, also, of course, I very much would like you if you would subscribe and even click on the bell here for YouTube if you want to know when new videos of mine come out. They're not on a regular schedule. They're sort of as time allows and as products come in. So if you want to not miss anything, definitely do that. Click on the bell. Thanks again for watching. This has been George the Tech. Come find me over at georgethetech.com if you need any tech support. And I'll be looking forward to hearing from you. Thanks again. Be good.